All right, the next part of uh, this lab deals with net ionic equations. And um, if you look at a question, uh, it's actually question 12, it talks about solubility rules. All right, uh, the solubility rules, you can answer those questions. They're just multiple choice questions that you can answer based on the, the solubility rules in your textbook. Um, in the intro textbook, that's page 217, and in the general chem textbook, it's page 149. All right, so I just reference those, and you should be able to answer them. There is one uh, thing to be aware of, the last one that talks about the solubility of sulfates. Um, in your textbook, it uh, is slightly different. Um, it doesn't include the uh, HG2 2 plus ion, um, the mercury 1 ion, um, and so, uh, but on Chem 21 it does have that, so slight differences, but uh, other than that it's uh, pretty straightforward I think. But uh, moving on to question 14, it has, uh, I'm just going to pick three different examples to illustrate a few uh, things and that should help you to um, to work through the rest of these. All right, so these are a few more net ionic equations, and we have the reactants. These are these are some. Of, there's nine different equations uh, that uh, nine different of those drops that we did that formed a precipitate. All right, and these are three of them that I'll be uh, looking at. We first, our goal is to write the net ionic equation. And at first we need to write the products, okay? We need a balanced equation, and then we can write the ionic and the net ionic equations, all right? So our products here, we're going to take the cation from the first compound and combine it with the anion from the second one. So um, we have barium, which, uh, you know, its charge from the periodic table is a positive 2 and it's going to combine with carbonate which is a negative 2 so that will just be BaCO3 goes together one to one All right. that's one product and the other product is sodium nitrate the sodium from the sodium carbonate will combine with the nitrate from the barium nitrate and uh, this sodium is a positive one charge. It's an alkali metal. And the nitrate, of course, is a negative one charge. So uh, sodium and the nitrate will also go together one to one. You'll get NaNO3. All right. So now we have the equation. Let's balance it. Uh, you see we have 2Na and 2NO3. So I need to put 2NaNO3. And there we're balanced. Okay, so now we need to look at each one of these and identify is this a soluble compound or insoluble compound, right? And so you reference those solubility tables in your textbook and you say, okay, well, all nitrates are soluble. So I know this one is going to split into the barium two plus ions and two nitrate ions. Okay. When you put these in on Chem 21, you're going to be putting in coefficients, charges, as well as the uh, states of matter, which in this case, since we're talking about the ions, this is when it's dissolved in water. Okay, all of the, the little drops that we did, they were all solutions. They were dissolved in water. So these are aqueous. All right. And then the sodium carbonate, all uh, compounds of alkali metals, as is sodium, they are all soluble. Um, and this is one note also with uh, question 12, it talks about the uh, group 1 ions. Well, group 1, those are the alkali metals, so uh, those are included there. Sodium, potassium, lithium, rubidium, all those ones. Okay. So, um, here we have two sodium ions, because this is a soluble compound, we separate it into the cations, 
and the anions, and these are aqueous. Note that the 2 is a coefficient, it's not a subscript, okay? Because these are two individual Na plus ions. There's no Na2 ion, okay? Um, and then we have the carbonate anion, CO3, with a negative 2 charge, and these are aqueous. Ions are always after it has dissolved in water, so they are always aqueous, right? Now on the product side, you look and you find that carbonates are generally insoluble, and uh, unlike the uh, alkali metal exception, barium is no exception. So this is our precipitate, barium carbonate. And since it's a solid, okay, we write it as a solid and we don't break it apart, okay? And then the sodium nitrate is soluble. So we have two sodium ions and two nitrate ions. Remember, we have two of these, so we have two sodium and two nitrate ions. Again, breaking this apart by the cation and the anion, we don't break up the polyatomic ions. All right? And I didn't put my two in there. Okay, so there we go. And these are aqueous. The ions are always aqueous. All right? So what you're going to put in is the net ionic equation. So you're going to cancel out all these spectator ions, the sodium and the nitrate ions. All right? And what's left there is what you would put in taking care of your charges. With all of these, you have to know your charges, look them up if you have to, you should have them memorized. But, uh, and then of course for the compound, it's a zero charge. Don't normally write th that as well as the one, but you would put in those uh, into Chem 21. Okay, let's look at uh, this next example. We have lead to nitrate. We know it's lead to nitrate because NO3 is a negative one charge. Nitrate has a negative one charge. And I have two of those, so that gives me a negative two charge from those two nitrate ions. And that must be balanced um, with the lead, so it's lead with a positive two charge. All right. So let's uh, predict our products. We have the cation from the first one. We'll combine with the anion from the second one. And even though lead can be, uh, m m you know, it can either be two or four, it can be different, have different charges. We're, we know it's charged from here, we're going to leave it the same. Okay, so when you don't know the charge of an element, you discern it from its ion, the counter ion, right? We found that it must be a positive two since the nitrate is a negative one. So here, that again, it comes from your memorization. If you thought it was a negative two, you'd think the lead was lead four, but it's not. Okay, it's lead to, and we're going to leave it that way on the right as well, which means if I have lead with a positive two charge and I combine it with chloride, which has a negative one charge, I have to have two chloride ions to balance it out. Okay, so that's one product. And then what's left is the sodium with the nitrate, just like before NaNO3. Right. So the question is which ones, uh, well first we need to balance this, and uh, we have two nitrate and two chloride. There's my two chloride, gives me two sodium ions, and so I need a two there to give me the two sodium and non-nitrate. Alright, now I need to look and see which ones of these are soluble. All nitrates are soluble, so this will uh, split apart and this is aqueous. Okay, The sodium chloride of course is soluble as we know that's your table salt. The lead chloride, uh, chlorides are generally soluble but there are some exceptions and lead is one of those exceptions. Okay, So in your table it says that uh, uh, compounds containing the chloride ion are generally soluble but then it has an exception listed. It says when these ions pair with silver, mercury one ions, or lead two, 
the resulting compounds are insoluble. So this one will be our solid, the sodium nitrate, of course, is aqueous. All right. So when we uh, write our ionic uh, equation, the complete ionic equation, you're going to have the lead two ions um, separated, okay, they're aqueous, and they're separated from the two nitrate ions, all right? Um, and then we have two sodium ions, two chloride ions. I'm not going to go through all of this. I think you get the idea. Then we have on this side, just like we see it here, just like we see it in the uh, in our in our drops, it was a solid compound, so it remains together. We would leave that one together, and it would have a zero charge. Um, and then this one, all the aqueous ones, we separate into their ions, and we put the aqueous subscripts on all those ions, and write in our charges for all of those ions. Okay, but for the solid one, we leave it just like that. All right. Then lastly, let's look at this. Uh, this is the last, uh, the last equation of this problem. All right, we have iron three nitrate. Okay, remember nitrate just as we saw as we used in this example. It's a negative one. You know that from memorization. I have three of them this time, so that's negative three from those three nitrates, making the iron. A positive 3 to balance that out to 0. Okay, so just as before, even though iron can be either positive 2 or positive 3, we're always going to leave it the same unless we have uh, are told essentially otherwise. All right, so this is going to be iron with a positive 3 charge. I'm just going to write that in there and then we'll write the products um, a little bit later. So my iron 3 is going to combine this time with the carbonate and um, that will form a, uh, a compound here. The, the carbonate of course is a negative two charge and the iron is a positive three so our iron three carbonate if you do the little crisscross it's uh, whoop, I need to start with the iron but it there are two iron and the carbonate in parentheses because it's a polyatomic ion and I have three of those. So that would be the formula for my iron uh, carbonate, iron three carbonate. Okay, so um, the uh, other product of course is our sodium nitrate once again. All right. So, uh, to balance this, um, I may have jumped ahead of myself here. I need to start with this compound. I have three carbonate, so I'm going to put three over here to balance that. That gives me six sodium, so I actually need a six over here. Okay, um, and that gives me six nitrates, which means I need two over here. All right. So uh, now, again, we look at these, which ones are soluble, which ones are insoluble, okay? So uh, my iron nitrate, all nitrates are soluble. You're just checking those solubility rules. So I'm going to write this as 2, breaking apart the cation, Fe3+, plus, from the anion. And remember, I have two iron ions, and I have six nitrate ions. All right. And of course these are aqueous. Okay. So same uh, same sort of thing here. We'll have six sodium ions, three carbonate ions, um, and then uh, this w you will find is the insoluble compound and um, here I have the um, another aqueous compound. Right? So um, you can uh, finish this out. You'll uh, have those ions. Then this is your solid. You'll cancel out all those spectator ions and you'll end up with the 
iron uh, ions. Basically, in all of these, you have the same uh, same basic outline, which is you look at you find your solid compound, and you, everything else is spectator ions except for the ions that form that compound. So you'll have your two iron ions and three uh, carbonate ions, okay, um, to form that uh, that solid, and then all those spectator ions will cancel out, okay. So you can kind of cut to the quick and and skip the total ionic equation, and you just find that solid compound, and that will determine what your net ionic equation is. Uh, just looking at at that, okay. So uh, that uh, hopefully will help with those uh, questions with the net ionic equations um, on uh, on that lab.